So uh, let's start. Let's start with this. Um, would everybody raise their hand? Um, everybody, raise their hand. Okay. And if you have uh, never done JavaScript before, put your hand down. And um, if you've done a little bit of JavaScript before, um, but never any real project, uh, also put your hand down. Okay. And uh, if you've never done any React before, uh, put your hand down. Okay. So we got a few. Okay. And if you've done React, but you've uh, you've never done any ES6 JavaScript. Cool. Awesome. We got some. We got some pros. I just wanted to get an idea of uh, kind of where the audience is. So. Can everybody understand me pretty well? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I will. Um, I'll try to speak slowly. I hope, and I get carried away a little bit. I can't go fast. So this is about React fundamentals. Uh, I'm Simon. Uh, I run a, a small startup called CodeFox in Bangkok, uh, Serpong. And uh, that's that's my Twitter. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to talk about why why you would choose React. At least we'll start with that. Um, like, like what is React and kind of uh, why you would use it. And so I think probably everybody's heard of it, but maybe um, maybe you don't know exactly what it is. So React is an opinionated view library. I mean, it doesn't really, React doesn't really do anything except for your view in your app. And um, it's, it's fundamentally different, I think, for building UIs than other frameworks or other libraries. Um, and it kind of leads you to, to think in terms of uh, some concepts that maybe you're not familiar with normally in JavaScript, uh, particularly pure functions and immutability. And, and there's some benefits to that. Those are pretty good practices. So, uh, so you know, these are a few companies that uh, have recently uh, rewritten significant portions of their code base in React. And so, um, it, you know, it's seen significant traction, it's seen a lot of adoption in the industry. And I think that uh, maybe people don't realize uh, why. The right? developer experience is, is probably important to everyone in this room. So I'll try to talk about these points today and we can, and we can try to figure out why people are choosing React. Um, so let's say, like, uh, what is the what is the alternative to using React? If you're building a, a client side application today, um, a sort of rich user interface, generally you would use React or Angular or Ember. Um, a lot of people are building maybe server heavy applications and just sprinkling a little JavaScript on uh, afterwards as an afterthought, like maybe some jQuery, and 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 that is probably not a candidate for using React. Right, React is generally for, for rich user interactions. So, um, so how is it different from these other ones? Right, everything is a component. Uh, your entire UI is a component, and it's built from subcomponents. Um, uh, a component is fundamentally a pure function of your application state, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and components can be reused, and they can be uh, composed together to create uh, to create more significant. And that's really important. So your UI is easy to reason about as state changes over time. Uh, but um, but in order to get into why companies choose to use React, I think React is a business decision. I don't think it's just a technology choice. And I think there's some competitive advantages associated with choosing React from a business standpoint, right? And so um, these are kind of my thoughts on this, right? Uh, Essentially, you need fewer software engineers because your engineers are more versatile. So you can take the same dev team and have them build an iOS app and turn around next month and have them build an Android app if you're using React in end. And I think that's a that's that's not the reason why React exists. That's not why it was built, but it's it's a really cool uh, thing that has come out of the React community. Um, improved testability and reliability, right? Like how many people have pushed some code to production and been like, man, I really hope that it's great. Um, because, you know, we always think, okay, I'll write tests for that later, and uh, sometimes we don't. And so, uh, because it's difficult. Testing is really hard, especially with UI, and I think React makes testing a lot easier. Uh, so you can, um, so, you know, that's part of the reason why it's a good business choice. I think that it's performant by default, um, 
real code reuse, right? Like if you build everything as a component, you can reuse the same component that you use in a completely different view um, elsewhere in your application. Um, but I think important is developer velocity, right? So you shorten the edit reload cycle, right? If you think about developing an iOS app or an Android app, you have a compile time associated with every time you make a change, right? Um, in React, it feels a lot more like developing a web application, and we'll talk about that more. So um, it, it's future-proof in, in two ways. In one way, um, if you look at the big names, the big companies that are using React and they're kind of pushing React forward, uh, it means that you can, you can feel safe that the other people have made a big bet on React, so it's not going to disappear tomorrow. And that's the same with other frameworks too, but it is important. And I think that um, the other thing that makes it feature proof is that as your software evolves, right, you rewrite pieces of your application over time, um, since React has these concepts of components, you can, you can replace individual components or rewrite individual components, and you don't have to do a rewrite. And your, your software feels uh, fresh uh, continually. So, um, so if that's the case, if it's such an obvious choice, then why do people, why do some companies still, you know, why do they choose Angular, why do they choose Ember? I mean, there's a lot of good things in these frameworks too, and I don't want to say that there isn't. What I want to say is that like, React is very different. It is a new technology. Um, I mean, it's been around for a few years, but it is very, it's a new way of thinking. And I think that new tech can be overwhelming. You know, where to start, right? How do you train your dev team? Um, and maybe you've got like a large legacy code base with a lot of resources already invested in something. Else, right, and, and that's a perfectly good reason to stick with what you've done, right? Um, so the kind of second part of this discussion is uh, how is React different uh, from a te technology standpoint, right? Like, like the things that we mentioned earlier, uh, what makes React special, right? What makes it game changing? And so let's start with what was the problem that React uh, was trying to solve, like when it was created. Uh, React is trying to solve a pretty simple problem. Uh, well, it's a complex problem to solve, right? Uh, the app state changing over time. It's really hard to reason about, right? So things, buttons get clicked, things get moved around, data comes in from the server, and your application state has to change. So um, that's difficult in, from a UI standpoint. So UI components get out of sync with each other, and uh, it can be really hard to debug what they're doing. So um, when changes happen, right? Uh, somebody clicks the buttons, a URL, uh, you know, navigation occurs, your, uh, you've received new data. Um, you have to reach, in a typical front-end application, you have to reach deep into your view, and you have to mutate objects. You have to turn, show and hide things. You have to rearrange items on a list. You need to um, change class names, show loading indicators. Um, and so that makes, uh, that makes things difficult, right? And this is the fundamental reason why. So, uh, and so this is from Pete Hunt in React Long 2015. Shared mutable state is the root of all people. And I think if you've done any heavy front end work, um, you, you might get this feeling. Uh, so, shared mutable state means that if two separate unrelated components can both mutate a shared object, right? And, and they do it uh, unbeknownst to each other. So, so uh, you end up getting uh, situations that, that are very hard to debug and hard to reason about. And so how can, you know, how can we start with, right? So if you look out, uh, so React and Redux gives you a mutable state, and we'll get into that. So, but, but let's jump back for a minute. Let, let's remember the old days when we did all the rendering on the server side, and, um, you know, Rails or PHP or, uh, you know, even going back older. Um, it was really easy, right? I mean, all we did was generate HTML views and send it to the browser, and the browser rendered it. And if anything changed, uh, we would get a new page loader, right? And so the key here is, like, why was this easy? Uh, it was easy because we had the full application state at one moment in time. So at, at the moment the HTTP request came to the server, uh, we had all the information we needed to generate the entire view and send it back. Um, and that's a snapshot. Having all the information of the application state at a moment in time is like a snapshot of, of how that page should look. Um, and so all we have to do really is when a request comes in, you know, we might be able to look some stuff up in the database, um, query some stuff and generate our view. Uh, so what happens when an action, when somebody clicks on something, they want to delete an item out of the list, uh, we just do it all over again, right? We get some new information, a button is clicked, that's new information, and so we, uh, we just query the database again, figure out what changed, and regenerate our view from scratch. So, uh, so it looks something like this, you know, simplified version. Um, we might have said, let's get some stuff from the database, let's render a div with a title, and then maybe we render some items. So, uh, it's, Presumably inside render items, uh, we generate some more HTML, right? Pretty straightforward. 
And then, you know, over time, we started sprinkling JavaScript on top of our applications, right? Because we were like, we can do 85% of what we need on server-side rendering, but let's add like a um, country selector and a, you know, some kind of like show hide accordion. in. And so we started sprinkling more and more JavaScript, I think, over the years um, into our applications. And it made life kind of difficult, right? So we have um, with jQuery, which made things easier, right? Uh, certainly easier than what we had prior to jQuery. Um, but it was doing DOM manipulation, right? It was turning things on and off and change, adding classes, removing classes, and changing styles. And um, and so uh, we said, okay, well, let's get some client-side templating. Uh, so if you remember, like, mustache and uh, handlebars, and, and those things still exist, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and it gives you a way to take some uh, model, uh, some information from your model, and generate some HTML. Uh, okay, so, but you still have to wire up your events. So if you think about it, if you generate fresh HTML like that, you need to set up on quick events and, and kind of still reach down into the DOM and do things and, and manipulate, uh, and you have to manipulate the DOM after you've generated using your templates. So we kind of got to a situation where things were getting pretty confusing. And so this is kind of how that, uh, what I just described would look, right? If you think about your event needs to change three elements, and this other event needs to change a few elements. And so uh, essentially, events are happening, clicks, and data is coming in from the server, and, uh, and we just, we're mutating elements all over our page, right? And, um, and that's fine for the computer, but it's difficult for us as the programmer to understand what's going on. So, um, so the problem, right? There's way too much complexity around keeping your app in a consistent state, right? So uh, consistent state means that if, um, if you have an unread messages counter and then you have a message list, uh, they need to be in sync, right? I mean, whenever you change something on the message list to become read, it needs to update counter somewhere else on the page. And so it's almost impossible to reason about things when you're reaching all over the page and changing items, right? All over the application. And so the bookkeeping for the programmer, right, makes a pretty bad experience because every time uh, your um, designer or your PM asks you to add a feature, you have to change a lot of things and a lot of different files all over the place uh, for your view. Okay, so what's the solution? Well, we had the solution before, right? Remember on the server side, we were just, every time we get new information, we generate the view again, the whole view. Um, and we never had a problem with all of this state manipulating state when clicks happen on the server because we just regenerated everything. It, uh, it was a URL changer, it was an HTTP post, right? And so uh, you can do the same thing by inside. Uh, we sure can. Uh, so this would be an example of, a, of the same div that we looked at in PHP, right? This is how we would do this on the client side. Uh, there's, there, there's a few things in there that are ES6, so you might not uh, recognize, but like the back ticks for strings there basically are just multi-line strings. Um, but, but if you can follow what's going on in this, um, we have some state, which holds our data, and then we generate some HTML from it and put it in the DOM using their HTML, right? Pretty straightforward. And so uh, what would we do when we need to change something in our state? Uh, okay, so this is the render address function that we talked about earlier. We just map over an array and we render some HTML, right? Kind of like what we're doing on the server side, but we're doing it in the browser. And then when we remove an item, uh, what we do is we generate a new state. So this dot 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 state notation um, is a little bit new, it might be new to some of you. It just means copy all this stuff from the previous state and then just uh, change our items. Is everybody kind of with me on what this code does? Uh, so, and then when we're done, we just re-render the whole thing. So this works uh, pretty well, and this is, um, uh, and this gives us this, right? This gives us so that every event changes the state, and every time the state changes, we re-render all of our elements. And so this is a lot easier to reason about as a human than what we saw earlier, right? And so, um, if you're with me so far, uh, this is exactly how React works. Um, that is the fundamentals of React. Okay, so your view is a function of your state. This means that uh, you can reason about your view just like we used to on the server side, because on the server side we had a state that wasn't changing while we were doing, while we were rendering our view, uh, our HTML, it was uh, consistent until we sent the view back to the client. So, 
Um, we can say your u is a deterministic function of your state, and that basically means the same state, given the same state, the same u will always be produced, so it's deterministic. Um, and even if you serialize that state, uh, save it to disk, and restore it next week, it will produce the exact same u. So you get some consistencies there. Um, Okay, so now once you've started down this, this path of putting everything in your state and regenerating your view every time, um, you get some excellent things that will start to fall. Um, now, I should, I should just stop to make a note here. So, uh, in, our, in our naive example there, we actually just um, threw away all the previous HTML and generated new HTML. And that is the concept behind React, but React uses some smarter mechanisms. So you can think of it that way. But behind, like under the under the hood, React does some like diffing of what has actually changed, and it does some virtual DOM performance enhancements. But you you don't really have to think about that. You can imagine that you're just creating a brand new page every time something changes. So uh, so what does that give us? Like what kind of cool stuff does that give us as a side effect, right? Um, so we get undo and redo for free, right? So if I wanted to just uh, have an undo function, I just hang on to my previous state that I had and, um, and just render it, right? Um, I get hot reloading uh, during development. That's a bit of a complex topic, we'll talk about that. Um, um, but we get atomic and optimistic updates. And what I mean by that is if, if I, if someone says I want to uh, like this post and I send that request to the server, uh, I can optimistically go ahead and change it to like, send that request off to the server. The server comes back and says like failure or some kind of error. Um, now I can just load a previous state because I hung on to that previous state, and then it just changes the view back, and I don't put myself into a um, into a state uh, where uh, where we're inconsistent with what our server believes to be true. So, um, and as a side effect, you get time travel debugging, so you can like, step back through your different states to to kind of see where things went wrong. Uh, those are all a little bit advanced, but they're really cool stuff to get. So, um, I probably took you too deep into some of that stuff. So let's just look at some React code, some simple stuff. So, same item list that we looked at earlier uh, with a div and then a, and a UL. So in this case, uh, we still have our state with our title and our item list, right? Um, and then our render function now, we took away those, those uh, string backticks, right? So now we just render the div uh, like that. And, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and then our render items function looks mostly the same. We've got an on click now that, uses, that has like this stop remove item, which is uses set state. So does everybody kind of understand this code? I don't want to move too fast. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so the important thing here is that events just update the state. So the event remove item happened. It made a new item list and it called set state. That's the important part. And so uh, you're probably thinking, dude, there is in your JavaScript. Uh, and there is. And so, uh, so you probably wouldn't put actual divs in your React code in production. You, your React code would look something like this, because we use composition. So you have a component for a thumbnail picture, and a component for a list item, and a component for a user list. And you can just pass a whole list of users to this user list component, and it will render for you. And that gives you separation of concerns that's really important. Um, does this kind of make sense? This syntax here is probably a little strange to you if you haven't used uh, React before. So I will explain really quickly what that, um, what all that XML looking stuff is, right? It's kind of like the data we saw before. So those are components, and um, they're essentially, uh, it's called JSX, and uh, it's really, it's really important. So, it looks weird at first, but it is essentially uh, what we would call syntactic sugar. And so it will convert your build process, it will convert your normal JavaScript. Uh, so what does it give us? Like, why do we put this XML weirdness in our JavaScript? So it gives us a really concise syntax for describing our views that looks easy to understand and easy to read. It gives us uh, static code analysis, right? So if you've written templates in like Angular, where you're using a separate file or using strings, um, if you put something wrong inside of that string, your editor is not going to know that that variable doesn't exist or that that property isn't the right property you meant to type. And so uh, you don't get static type checking. But since JSX is fundamentally kind of part of the JavaScript language, you get some really powerful tools there. Um, and it directly compiles the JavaScript. So if you don't want to use JSX, you don't have to. But 
almost everyone does in React World. So, um, composition of components, right? So, what are these components that we saw before? These um, like thumb, like detail lists. Like, where is that? Where is that coming from? And, and thumbnail pick. Uh, so, those are uh, components that are built of other components. So, somewhere down the chain, somebody's rendering a div or a span. If you're on web or if you're on mobile, a view or a touchable highlight, right? Um, and so uh, this is the other extremely powerful thing about React. So the first really powerful thing about React is that uh, everything is in a state and that a view is just a function of your state. The second powerful thing is that your view is built of components uh, and so you get a different kind of separation of concerns than you might have uh, in other frameworks. Right? So this, I, I feel, is a more um, a clearer separation of the service, right? So you get uh, code reuse because I can build my user list in one place and I can use it for some for the friend list here and I can use it for a search, uh, when someone search for users in a different part of my application. Um, and I get clean layers of abstraction, right? So I can so I can build a uh, submit button from a normal button um, and, I, and I get these layers of kind of adding functionality onto components. Uh, but React leaves it completely up to you to separate your concerns however you like, right? Um, it just, React is actually a very thin view library, so you can separate things how you choose. And so most people have presentational components, which are purely for layout and styling. And, uh, and then your CSS designers can, um, can tweak those to be just the way you need them to look, uh, to look great. And, and, and when a new redesign happens, you can change those presentational components without messing with the logic of your application, without even touching the files that the logic lives in. Uh, and then you have container components which know about how to get the data. Uh, what is the structure of your data? What does the state look like? Um, uh, logic for when a mouse click happens. So um, your container components don't generally know anything about your layout or styling because in my opinion, those are two separate concerns. Uh, okay, so what is the price you pay for using React? Um, Nothing is free. Uh, it might be free in terms of money, but you, you pay the price of some complexity, right? So there is a setup complexity. Um, you know, by the time you set up your build step and your linting tools and your compiler, your you know your editor needs to support this JSX syntax so that it can understand and you know, things when you're doing something wrong. There is certainly some complexity in setting it up, and the choices can be kind of overwhelming. Where do I put my stage? Should I do it this way or this other way? Because React doesn't really give you a clear um, sort of convention of how you should uh, of how you should structure things, right? And that's kind of a JavaScript pattern that we talked about earlier, right? Uh, in the previous talk, is that JavaScript doesn't give you guidance in some of those things. You have to figure it out yourself. So the choice is to be overwhelming. Um, there's a moderate learning curve, as there would be any technology, but React can change the way you think about your UI in terms of thinking about it functionally as a function of state, and that takes some time getting used to it. Um, and React has a rapidly evolving ecosystem. The things that are, um, uh, the, the tools that you'd be using, Redux and, and some of these other tools that we, that we haven't talked about in this talk, um, are not made by the same people who make React, and so this whole community around that, uh, things are kind of changing a little bit. So, um, it sometimes feels a little overwhelming. But, you know, these are the drawbacks. And so you don't have, like for instance, you don't have some of the setup complexity if you use uh, Angular because they make all those choices for you. And it gives, it's a full framework, it gives you a lot of bits. But I think that in React, um, what you get in return for paying price and complexity um, vastly outweighs the cost of the setup. And so you get a developer experience that I think is unlike any other developer experience in the web. Um, you get to move fast. As a developer, you don't want to spend time debugging. You don't want to spend time styling components. Um, you want to just like do your coding and build awesome things. And so by shortening the, the edit and reload cycle um, and spending less time debugging, you get, a, you get a fantastic experience as a developer. Um, you can write this little code without um, spending more time writing tests than writing your original code. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't spend more time writing tests than you do writing your actual code. Um, because if, if you have functional components, things are a little bit easier to test, right? Um, iterate with confidence. You don't have to like worry as much when you push code to, to production if it's going to break everything. Um, and so, uh, lastly, and we barely touched on this in this talk, but uh, the kind of learn once and write everywhere principle is really powerful. Uh, being able to learn one set of technologies, and that pays off from a business standpoint, it pays off as a developer on your resume. If you can learn one set of technologies, then you can build for iOS and you can build for web. Um, 
doing pretty well. So that's my talk.